Welcome to our final chapel of this semester. Certainly, we would all agree that this has been an odd semester for us at Point with different class schedules, times when we could not meet together, and of course, we've not been able to have a chapel service all semester. But I hope that these virtual opportunities have been helpful to you in your own spiritual journey. Uh, tonight, we're talking about um, Christmas, of course, and um, just a couple of words from Scripture that speak to Christmas. Perhaps the most important one is the Scripture that Christians and many non-Christians recognize instantly. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. At the heart of Christmas is the fact that God is in giving mode, and we are the recipients of a great blessing from Him. But I'm also mindful tonight of the fact that um, sometime after the birth of Jesus, uh, some wise men, uh, magi, as some translations call them, came from the East. These are not Jewish people who would have expected a Messiah, but something about the birth of Jesus and God's work in the world had convinced them that they should come and see this one who was born king. And they brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And perhaps the idea that God is giving and these wise men brought gifts has created this idea that at Christmas we ought to be giving. And so a part of what I hope can happen tonight is that our entire Point community scattered all over the place during this holiday season in our various homes and in other places, we'll, we'll think for a moment about the opportunity we have to follow that pattern of giving. I've asked Clint Nolder, who's the lead pastor at Foundation Christian Church in Newnan, Georgia, and a 2008 Point graduate to speak to us briefly about the value of reaching out beyond ourselves and giving and serving others. I think you will like what he has to say. And then once Clint has finished his part of our worship tonight, which will be about five minutes, President Collins is going to come on and challenge us to find a way in our various communities, in our families, in our churches, in organizations where we live, to find a way in the name of Christ and as a student of Point University, a faculty member, a coach, a staff member, to find a way to do something that demonstrates to the world that we really appreciate the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And following in the example of these ancient magi, we also bring gifts to the kingdom of God. I hope you will find tonight's service to be meaningful and that you will do your best, whether it's you as an individual or you as a group, perhaps with other point students in your community, uh, to find a way to offer a gift of service in the name of Christ during this special season.
Point University, what's poppin'? My name is Clint Nolder, and I'm a lead pastor at a church plant in Noonan, Georgia, uh, called Foundation. And uh, we launched in January 2018 uh, in partnership with an organization called Stadia and a number of churches that helped uh, mother us and get us going. Uh, so here we are right here on the southwest side um, of Atlanta. Uh, on our way to Point University, you know what I'm saying? Leave Atlanta, come out of the airport, you pass us to get to you, you know what I'm saying? Class of 08, so uh, old school in the house, uh, probably not as old school as some of the folks that are watching this, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, compared to some of you who are in the middle of it right now, um, yeah, I've been there and loved every moment of my experience um, at this particular institution of higher learning. So uh, thanks for having me a part of uh, you know, your December virtual chapel. And so uh, I was asked to just to talk about, man, how, if you're heading back home, you're already home and you're figuring out how do, how do I take what I am as a follower of Jesus, who I am as a follower of Jesus and put it into practice back home? How do I serve my community? How do I get my hands dirty a bit? Do I have any thoughts on that? And so I, I got plenty of thoughts on everything. So of course, here it is. Here are some thoughts. I don't know if this will be helpful to you, but it's been helpful to me. And um, I think it's been helpful to our church. And so I'll just give you my thoughts and then uh, you can run with what you want to run with. So when we think about community engagement, we've got three simple rules. Um, rule number one is that we want to make sure that we're incredibly consistent. And so what we don't do is uh, just like a one-off thing. So if we be like, hey, you know what, we're going to, do this thing one time and then we're see you later. Like we did that. We had this great moment. Let's take some pictures. Let's throw on Instagram or Facebook. And then we feel good about ourselves in the moment that person felt good about it or whatever. And then we're done. So we, we said, Hey, we don't want to do that. Um, we want to be consistent, which obviously if you're at home and you're thinking, man, what's something I can do to engage my community that might qualify to break our rule of, Hey, this is just a one time thing. So to help you with that, I would say, Hey, uh, don't just like go try to invent something on your own partner with someone who's already doing God's work in your community um, that is consistent and go to them and say, hey, here's the deal. I'm home for the next couple of weeks. I got probably eight to 10 hours um, that honestly, I'd like to invest in getting my hands dirty and helping people out. Uh, and so I've heard that y'all are great you know, organization. Can I jump in with y'all, right? Man, do that. You know, you know what I'm saying? So consistency, I think is huge. Obviously you can't be consistent if you're home only for a couple of weeks. So find someone who is and add value to what God's already doing through them. Rule number two is high impact. So we just, we just decide, Hey, if we're going to go in somewhere and we're going to be consistent with something, we want to see the needle move. So that also kind of goes into what, what you got kind of got going on. Man, there's probably someone trying to do something that's just God sized in your community this Christmas. And right now they're sitting there praying that God would send them resources and possibly people to pull off this God sized dream they're doing. Find them because they're already praying for you, right? They're praying that you show up. And so when you do show up, they're like, <laughs> This is unreal. Like God's actually listened to what's happening. This is a God-sized dream, a God-sized God -sized initiative, and now God is sending the people to pull it off. I'm telling you right now, there's someone in your hometown trying to do something that's well above their pay grade, that's long, much further out in front of, uh, of what they think they, or that they know they can accomplish, and only God's going to be able to do it. 99% of what God accomplishes in this world is done through Holy Spirit filled believers. The miraculous definitely still here, but every day in our walking around in life, it happens because we carry the spirit of God in, inside of us. Come on. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying church? Can I get an amen? Come on. Now we're preaching rule number three, right? So we got number one, we want to be consistent. Rule number two, we want to move the needle. Let's do something. Let's do something. Let's do something, baby. Number three, it's not a recruitment strategy. So if we, if we decide to serve somebody, we decide to jump in somewhere, it, the, the goal is not to recruit them to something we're doing. The goal is for us to go to where they are. Our church says, hey, people are our destination. So we want to go to where the people are and we want to meet them where they are. We, we're not trying to convince them, oh, well, the reason I did this is because I really got this up. Like, here's my, I'm helping you and my serving you is the bait and switch for something else I want to get you to come to. No, no, no. No, our goal when we serve is to go and serve them, right? And let, let's just be honest. So I'm talking specifically about where I'm located in a southwestern city on the southwest side of Atlanta 
here in the southeast of the United States. It's a very old city. And so right now where I'm sitting, there's 59,125 residents within a five mile radius of where I sit at this very moment. 64 to 72% of those people are disconnected from faith. Now it's not because they don't know who Jesus is. It's because they think they have a really good understanding of who Jesus is. It's not because we're in an unreached city that's just like, man, never heard the name Jesus before. It's because they've heard the name Jesus. But not only that, they've seen what followers of Jesus look like, at least what they think they look like, and it's rubbed in the wrong way. And so a lot of what we do is reputation repair. So the last thing they want to do is, oh, this church came to help us. This follower of Jesus came to help us, but they don't really want to help us. They just want to bring us to their thing on Sunday mornings. So we say, hey, Sunday morning is important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the followers of Jesus are getting out into the lives of actual people, that they're the destination. Sunday morning is not. Uh, and so I would encourage you as you're thinking through, hey, is there a bait and switch? Or are you really serving just to serve? Are you helping with the reputation repair that must be done in today's culture? Because let's be honest, and I was one of them. As followers of Jesus have had bad days and on those bad days, our mouths kind of run a little rampant. Sometimes we say things we ain't supposed to say, it's things that uh, we probably should never say. And we treat people in ways that make Jesus look bad. And when we got Jesus all over us, right? At one point we were wearing bracelets and t-shirts, right? That's, that's what we did. And then people got this idea of, man, Jesus is this way. But, you know, the truth is we just made a mistake. And so we go back in and say, hey, we're here just to serve you. We're here to serve you because this is what Jesus would do if he was here. He would be here to serve you, right? And so those are those three things. So I would encourage you, hey, as you're taking a look around, um, man, find somewhere that God's already moving and and go to that person that leaves and says, hey, I'm here for the next couple of weeks. Um, how, can I, how can I get my hands dirty with you? Um, find some place that's really moving the needle because there's already someone doing some God-sized thing that can't be done without God's help. And here's the truth. God wants to send you on behalf of himself to help this person pull off this God-sized dream in the month of December in your hometown, so go do it. Uh, third thing is, make sure your heart's in the right place, that you're going to serve people in the name of Jesus, not serve people in the name of recruiting them to something else. Because at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit, once they get a taste of what's happening, I'm like, hey, I, I want more of what's happening here. How do I figure that out? And then, of course, man, those people in your hometown, possibly you might have the answers of what could be possibly be next, but don't let that be the goal. Be the goal being Jesus to them in that moment. Uh, th those are my thoughts, right? Those those are my thoughts. And I think that uh, if every single one of you, uh, man, took some initiative to say, you know what, I'm not going to just rest and have a little, you know, uh, recoup time in my vacation, but I'm going to really get after it. The last thing I want to encourage you to do, um, if there's no getting dirty in your life, do me a favor. The Jesus that you're following, go tap him on the shoulder, right? Just go tap him on the shoulder and make sure he turns around. If you're not getting dirty in your life, your hands aren't getting dirty in your life because you're serving other people, tap the guy you're following. And here's the deal. I, this is what I bet's happening. When he turns around, you're going to see a white, blue, blue eyed, brown, gorgeous locks Jesus. He kind of looks like the guy that is in the picture frame over your grandmother's kitchen table. Uh, here's the thing. That guy doesn't exist. He's not real. Uh, the Jesus that is actually authentic and real is a Middle Eastern Jew. And here's the other thing. When you go to tap him on the shoulder, he likely won't be standing up for you to tap him on the shoulder. He'll likely be on his knees washing someone's feet with his hands in the dirt. And so you'll have to get down there with him to get next to him to have a conversation because that's where the Jesus that we ought to be following lives and breathes and works because son of man did not come to be served but to serve, right? So let's get after this Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Point University, thanks for having me. I don't know if this makes any sense to you or not, um, but I hope it uh, maybe is a little valuable to you. God bless you, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll see you soon. Bye. Well, Merry Christmas. And thanks to Clint and Y for collecting our thoughts about how we need to act this Christmas season. We miss you. We wish you could celebrate with you. But they're right, the most important thing we can do is act like Jesus wherever we are this Christmas season. So find someone to serve, to say a prayer for, to give a gift to, to encourage. And that's when they'll have and we'll all have a very Merry Christmas. God bless you.